You're watching the Buddy Pugh Show, featuring highlights of the defending back-to-back -back MEAC champions, SC State University Bulldogs. Our sponsors are State Farm Insurance, Orangeburg County, the South Carolina Education Lottery, the Regional Medical Center, Time Warner Cable, Palmetto Health, Advanced Diagnostic Imaging Center, Fats Cafe, Paragon Builders, Bill Owens Custom Clothing, and Whitash Furnishing. And now, here's Coach Buddy Pugh and our host, Ernest Robinson. And welcome once again to another edition of the Buddy Pugh Show as we talk South Carolina State football with Bulldog Head Football Coach Buddy Pugh. Saturday, the Bulldogs ventured up to Greensboro, North Carolina to close out the regular season against the North Carolina Anti Aggies. And South Carolina State comes away with a very impressive 48 3 win over the Aggies. Coach, and first of and foremost, congratulations on a share of the MEAC championship. Thank you very much. It was a little bit unexpected. Uh, we kind of thought that that was done, but. You know, we were fortunate that Florida and M uh, uh, won a game yesterday with Bethune Cookman, and, you know, we'll see what happens now with the rest of the scenario. Coach, when you start talking about this final game, you needed to be impressive, and obviously it was impressive enough that we should have a playoff run. It, it, it should, and it's always gratifying when you set a goal. We wanted to go in and get some style points from the way we played yesterday, and, you know, it worked out for us. We played good, uh, I think, on all sides of the ball, and, you know, it was the kind of game where we really did a nice job of, of, of setting a tone early all the way through. Let's take a look at the starters for South Carolina State on Saturday. Coach, this has been a team that's been ravaged by injuries, but your seniors came through and players are starting to come back now. They are. Uh, you see Sam Timothy there. And, you know, a bunch of our kids are, are, are really beat up some, but we, we, we think that we're in good shape to, to go into these playoffs. Uh, you see uh, uh, Dwayne Clark and Chris Massey in, those, in, in the starting lineup. Those guys, you know, out now. And then on defense, uh, uh, we got a nice group of guys there, Roy Nell Ferguson, uh, that's, that, that's healthy and ready to go. And you, know, you see David Irvin. David Irvin just, was just selected the defensive player of the year for our league. And, then we get to our secondary, uh, Dominique and CT, Samaj, uh, Yara King, all those guys are, are good, solid guys who play very well together. And then our special teams guys, uh, Blake Erickson, was also one of our all-conference players. All right, great game on Saturday for South Carolina State. We will take a time out here on the Buddy Pew Show. When we come back, we'll get to Saturday's big highlights from Greensboro, South Carolina State, North Carolina A&T on this edition of the Buddy Pew Show. Furnishings for the set of the Buddy Pew Show provided by Whitash Furnishings. Whitash Furnishings is a proud sponsor of the Buddy Pew Show. It was a picture perfect fall Saturday afternoon for South Carolina State up on Greensboro Coast and a great contingency of Bulldog fans on hand. It was a really good crowd. We had more people there than they did. And we start the game off by kicking off to them, and Blake does a nice job of kicking the ball and not giving them a chance for that great kickoff return team with us to get going. And then they start hurting us some with the, with the naked game and the stress game. It's the same play and the play action off of that play. It, you know, it took us a while to adjust to this thing. You see them hit it, hit it again out in the flat, and you know, eventually Mason Harris gets them down the ground here, but now we get some pretty, you know, good gains against us there for a while, and then we rush Donovan Richards at him. If you want to get something started, run Donovan at him, and you see Pat Washington and and and, and, and Mason Harris running each other. I'm sure they kind of fell a little danked up a little bit, but they ended up being okay. And then we come back and throw a ball out here to uh, to Tyler McDonald. Tyler has really gotten to be a good player for us as a freshman wide receiver. That was the third down conversion play there, and then Malcolm steps up into the rush, which is always good when a quarterback goes that way as, as opposed to sideways and hits Tyler again. And, Tyler had seven catches in the first half on Saturday, finished with seven for the game coach, but we've really seen him mature over the course of the season into a good receiver. Right, and this drive ends up stalling on us, but he hits Tyler again out in the flat, and we end up having to punt here because we, we want to go for it on fourth down, but they call us for holding, and, you know, we end up going and uh, going on and punting the ball to him, hoping that we can pin him down in that territory, but, you know, we don't gain a whole lot when the ball goes into the end zone that way, but then that, now we got a little bit different adjustment, and, you see Marshall McFadden getting after that stretch play. Uh, I think Pat Watson from the inside kind of pushes, and then, you know, they do try to run again, and you see what the results are <laughs> here. David Irvin gives him a pretty good lick, and, you know, I thought Julius was going to intercept that thing and run it in for a score, but he didn't quite make it, and then we get the ball back and, and give it to Aston Jordan. Aston runs off 
the, the left side there. Big Jake Johnson comes back and sees a nice uh, uh, look on the blitz look for them. And then we come back and hit Tyler over the middle here. This is a choice right outside, but we got to back outside of that. And you know, Malcolm makes a good read. And then we throw a little play here. This is actually the jailbreak screen. And this is a flea flicker off of the jailbreak screen. And we flip it back to our running back who comes out of the backfield after we throw it out that way. And then we come back here and run another configuration of the same play. And Tyler McDonald scores. Eight yard touchdown catch. Tyler McDonald from Malcolm Long. It was a five play, 55 yard drive. Took just a minute and 50 seconds. We missed the extra point. Go up 6 0. That was disappointing. They got a little bit of a push for us. And you know, made an uh, uh, made a, 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 a nice play and then blocked a, a, a field a, a PAT. And then we come back here. They're trying to convert a third down and they throw the ball out in the middle. And Darius Drummond, our freshman from Asheville, North Carolina, makes a nice interception for uh, almost a score. And he gets it down to about the one inch yard line. But uh, we do eventually get it in. Darius Drummond, a freshman, as you mentioned, coach, and uh, out of Asheville, impact guy, his fourth interception of the season there, and of course, in limited duty. Right, because uh, uh, he's not a starter for us, but he plays a lot and didn't play last week at all, had a concussion, but you know, he's come back strong this week. And then you see Malcolm on the little zone play score. Malcolm gets it in, point after touchdowns good, makes it 13 0 South Carolina State. North Carolina team coach uh, had some moments, and they come back and they move it down the field. They can move the football. The Hines guy, their quarterback, is a is a real elusive style kind of runner and uh, and passer. And sometimes, you know, he gives a little, a little bit of a problem there. You know, they get a, they get the ball down the field a little bit and they try to go for the field goal here, but it comes up a little bit short. Sinclair Schindler short on the field goal attempt. South Carolina State will take over on offense. And again, I tell you what, coach, it certainly gives you renewed enthusiasm for offense when you see Ashton Jordan run football. <laughs> I guarantee you, you know, Ashton, you know, really a good player for us. And, you know, when we lost him, when we lost our running backs in general, it was kind of a downer for us. And to get those guys back at this time of the year, you know, is really special. So we're looking really forward to seeing how he can play in the playoffs if we can get in. George Hines scrambles, gets the first down for North Carolina a and the Aggies kind of moving the football down the field. He double pumps, big catch here and a first down for the Aggies. Yeah, they end up getting a field goal out of this drive. And, you know, this was a little bit disappointing because they converted a couple third downs on us when, you know, we thought that we could get them stopped, but they do get three points out of the deal. A 12 play, 61 yard drive, a 37 yard field goal by Schindler, makes it 13 3 South Carolina State, but we come back with a big return here by Richard Christie. Right, Richard has a nice return here. I thought he should have turned it back inside right there, but. You know, he saw, he, I think he thought he could juke that guy. The guy kind of trips him up. But, you know, we hand the ball here to Ashton, and Ashton gets a nice gain on first down. Uh, uh, we come back and, and, uh, and, and have another nice little, little run here. And this is Ashton here on a, on, a, on a third and short play. And, you know, he gets about seven, eight yards there. South Carolina State now moving the football down the field in the second quarter here, trying to close out the quarter. And Devin Weary, coach, a guy who's been consistent really all season long when we had problems and running Devin's back. Devin's a load. He does so many things for us because he's a, he's a fullback for us, and you know he also plays the running back position. And we give it to, we give it to him. We want a hard downhill kind of thought. And then you see Malcolm scoring again on the quarterback zone play. Malcolm second touchdown of the season, second touchdown of the game makes it 23 South Carolina State. That was the end of the first half. We'll take a time out here on the Buddy Pugh Show. When we come back, we'll tell you, um, we'll get into Saturday's second half and, of course, the thoughts at halftime from Coach Buddy Pugh. We'll be back after this timeout.